So we now have a form that is validating an ID between 3 and 10, an email, a URL, and a zip code, which is very nice. We're going to add now something that you have to do to strings. Let's make this bigger on almost all forms because you never know where the data is coming from and that is to sanitize them so that if somebody types in a javascript command in your form you can either change the tag symbols the greater than and less than symbols to encoded symbols which unable to execute code or you can just remove them altogether and i'll show you how to do both of those so what we're going to do after our zip code is put in a comment. And in this comment, we're going to remove all of the special characters. I'll show you how that works. So let's first put in our comment. Dun, dun, dun. So ask the user for a comment. We're going to call, let's call it comment one because we're going to have a comment two. We'll even call this one comment one. So now we have to get our comment. Okay, it's going to be more like this one. So let's copy that and comment one the variable name is comment one now what do we want here filter validate control space and we want to remove the characters so we're going to choose filter sanitize not validate but sanitize filter sanitize string and so now that since we're not validating this actually we're just sanitizing it it's a little simpler here we still have to say is null if it didn't send it at all then we need to say for instance echo div the comment one argument is missing so that'll be fine else we want to show it special characters re removed from comment one, and then it'll show the comment one here. So comment one. So that should be all. We'll remove characters. Let's just put it here so we can see it there in the form and let's look. So we have comment one and we type in something normal and it says special characters removed from comment one. There were no special characters removed, so that's fine. But now if we say B, whatever, B, whatever, it just takes them out. Let's make this clearer. For instance, hello, and then some script alert. I'm a hacker. Now it just says hello alert, and all of these tags have been removed. So there are times actually when you don't want to remove them, you just want to encode them. Let me show you how to do that with a comment too. So let's do that real quick. Copy, comment to, comment to, will encode characters. So then we go here, go here, comment one, comment two, and get comment two. So sanitize what? Special characters. We'll go down here and we'll show it again. Comment two. This is comment two, just to be precise here. Comment two. Argument is missing, of course. Okay. And here, this is comment two. Comment two. And encoded. And let's look at it. So comment one will remove characters, comment two will encode characters. So let's type the same thing in both and we'll see how they both work. Java, or no, script, alert, script. So like that, copy it. And we'll see what each does to this. So special characters removed from the comment. It just says alert because these tags were removed. And here we have the tags still in there, but they are encoded. We can see that if we do control U, let's move this in here, go all the way to the end, and we see that it has encoded these potentially dangerous greater than and less than symbols. So let's go back and go back to our code. 
So let me show you one more way that you can use input filters, and that is that you can have an input filter call a custom function. For example, if you want to check the input that was put into your, typed into your form by a user, let's say a name, and check if that name is in a database, for instance. So let's do an example here. Username. So he types in a username here. Username and as an example, would look up in database. And we're not actually going to program a database here, but we are going to emulate a database. So here, what do we need? Let's type this username equals filter input input post again and username and filter callback. Now we need to send it an array and tell it which function it should call. Options and check. We're going to call it check if user is valid, for instance. And that's all we need. So now we have to write this function because it's going to be calling it. So here we go. So this uh, simply returns the same name if user is valid or blank if not function check if user is valid and we're going to send desired name okay so they type something in and we need to check it so this would look up in a database for instance but right now we're just going to have a little switch statement so switch desired name right It's always good to put a string to upper here. So case is, let's say Jim is in the database. And so we're going to return here, R is our return variable, R equals desired name. Break, so. And let's allow one other one, John and Jim. Jim and John. So turn these our name and the default. Just to be very exact here, we'll say zero. And then we have a break. So and after that, it's going to return it. So it's going to return simply the name if the name is in the database. And now we have to actually handle this. So. We have here username, so if, and we'll do the same thing as all the other ones, if it is null, this username, then, well, he didn't even send it. I mean, the programmer didn't even program it in the form. So we say the username argument is missing. So now where it gets interesting is otherwise, or we can do this else if, else if user name is empty. If it's empty, that means it didn't find it. So here we can say the user was, The user username was not in the database. For instance, else, and then here we have success. So we'll just cover this. The user username was in the database. So that should work. Let's see. We have a new form here. Looks up the username, Sally. The user was not in the database. Interesting here that it didn't say Sally. Okay, let's debug that real quick. Of course. We don't have it there at that point. We would have to copy it, of course, above, but you get the idea if we wanted to still have the name. So Sally, the user was not in the database. Super. Jim, the user was in the database. John, the user was in the database. Frank, the user was not in the database super. So you see that you have some rudimentary ability to call a custom function to do validation that you aren't able to do with these other features of the input filter.
So I just want to show you one more thing, and that is that you can not only use post, but get. You can not only post variables, but get variables. For instance, a get variable would be here if you had how many equals seven, for instance. And then here, this is like an int. Let's copy this. So you have here how many. This is going to be an integer. How many. And int. Very good. But it's not a post, but a get. So then down here we can say, let's just copy it from ID because it's much the same. And at this point we've already gotten the variable. So we have it here. It's going to be validate uh, how many, how many, the how many argument is missing. Okay. The how many argument must be an integer. That's all we check it for. We don't have a minimum maximum like an ID. And this has to be how many, how many, how many, many, many. Okay, we got it all. And now we can test it, reload it, and just send a blank form. And it says how many is valid, and it's seven because that's what we put here. We change it to five, of course, it's still an integer. It's valid and it's five, super. But if we type in letters, send it, the how many argument must be an integer. So there you see, you can do the same thing with gets, with variables that are coming in on get, as you can with post.